Ooh. What's up, everybody? My name is Om GWTF, LOL, FTW, BRB. Welcome back to more TEW versus the WWE. Kind of reversed that around there this time. The weekly series where we take the events and shows ran by the WWE, book them in the game and see just how well WWE does against TEW, or if Total Extreme Wrestling will be the company to bring WWE down to its knees. Today we are booking the July 17th, I should know this, I, I just booked SmackDown, edition of 205 Live. I did go ahead and edit the way the shows are ran, so SmackDown does officially go before 205 Live like it does in real life, so there is that. Main event of the night, the man of the hour, Leo Rush takes on former Cruiserweight champion Akira Tozawa. Let's just jump right into everybody's favorite show. I know you guys have been waiting a long time for this. We are a week behind, so some of you guys may be a little upset. Like, come on, we, we already know this. We want to see this week's 205 Live. We'll get there. We'll get there. Nonetheless, 32 E-plus rating to open up the show as GM DM Drake Maverick hypes up the, uh, you know, last week's Cedric Alexander and Hideo Itami match. And then moving on to this week, as we will see Akira Tozawa battle Leo Rush in the main event. And in the opening bout, TJP taking on Noam Dar. 31 E plus as TJP before the match takes the mic and he sarcastically thanks Maverick for letting him know who his opponent is this time and giving him enough time to actually prep. Um, he would like to throw his name in for the Cruiserweight Championship match, although he doesn't believe Maverick will, you know, appreciate the Cruiser greatness that he is or whatever. Uh, he pokes fun at the town that he is, asking people, why do people even live here? Wouldn't, you know, do you guys actually say you're from here or, you know, do you just say you're from Philly? I enjoyed that line. I used to grow up in the Jersey area, so it kind of, uh, hit me. I liked it. I was like, huh, I get that joke. Uh, he talks a little bit of crap on Noam Dar before Dar comes out. And we get ready for our matchup. <clears throat> I am kind of teasing a face turn here for Noam. I'm not sure if he is a face. He's just kind of like a, another person on the roster. So I think I'm going to keep him heel for now until I think, feel like he's a definite face. Or Yeah. Nonetheless, 28E rating. This is one of those kind of angles where it's actually happening while the match is going on. But there's really no way for me to do that. So I do it before the match. Uh, Drake Maverick is just watching at the TJP versus Noam Dar match, pretty much keeping an eye on all the matches here tonight because, uh, you know, he, there's implications. By the end of tonight's show, he wants, uh, or he's going to pretty much state who is going to be next in line to face Cedric Alexander for the Cruiserweight Championship. So he's keeping an eye on all the in ring action here tonight. Uh, yes. And then finally, we get into our opening match of the night, which, whoo, buddy, is that not good. 34E plus rating and a terrible matchup here. TJP goes, goes over, what am I trying to say here? Noam Dar in 12 minutes, 23 seconds with the TJP clutch. I think he just hit a heel lock or whatever it's called, whatever. After blatantly cheated, not really blatantly cheating here. Um... I, the reason I say it's tainted is because a tainted finish means that there's kind of an excuse as of why the other wrestler lost. It, it doesn't always have to mean like, oh, they put their foot on the ropes or, you know, someone cheated and used the weapon. Sometimes it could mean that, you know, the other guy is having an injury problem and he has his excuse. He wasn't 100% going into the match or he had an injury during the match, which uh, led to, um, you know the the kind of tainted victory here where there's a little bit of an excuse here. And that's the case with Noam Dar here, which having suffered a knee injury in the past uh, during this match, he uh, hurt, tweaked his knee or something, which TJP took full advantage of, locked in the uh, leg lock or whatever it is TJP does, and uh, made Noam Dar tap out. So uh, TJP really off his game. That's unfortunate. We already know about the pretty good chemistry between Vic Joseph and Percy Watson. Uh, did cool the crowd a little bit. TJP with an in-ring performance of a 35. Noam Dar not too far behind with a 32. Mind you, though, TJP was really off his game. So that being Noam's best, TJP probably could have done better. <clears throat> yeah, we're going to keep Noam uh, doing his thing right now. Uh, 33E+, plus as we get a little bit of a recap from last week's 
Cruiserweight Championship match between Cedric Alexander and Hideo Itami. 22 E minus as we see Leo Rush backstage. He's getting ready. All smiles on his face as he's doing some weird, like, I don't know, basketball maneuver. I don't know. He's, like, sitting there like he's, like, it looks like he's guarding somebody, like, in basketball. That, that That's what it looks like he's doing. I don't know. It was weird. Uh, 36 D minus rating. Mustafa Ali, look at you, buddy. Uh, weird little... I don't know if this was a commercial or not, but it was a promo on Mustafa Ali's part, pretty much just talking about how he did the impossible and beat Buddy Murphy, and his eyes are on the Cruiserweight Championship now. So 36 D minus there for uh, Mustafa. 100 A star for Big Break John coming in with our pointless commercial break. Thank you, as always, John Cena. Did I not press the button? I guess not. That's okay. I was going to say, do not tell me I didn't press the button the second time. 37 D minus rating. This does a lot better than you would expect. 37 D minus rating. Terrible matchup here. Drew Gulak goes over local talent Danny Garcia in 39 seconds with the Gulak submission hold. Uh, Brian Kendrick and Jack Gallagher still having their alliance with Drew Gulak here, joining him at ringside. Uh, Garcia was really off his game, which is unfortunate for him. This did go ahead and cool the crowd, but Brian Kendrick doing some good work ringside. Danny Garcia with an in-ring performance of a 20. Drew Gulak with a 46. And if you guys are curious, Danny Garcia is played by Drew Blood. So the battle of Drews tonight, technically, as we got Drew Gulak versus Drew Blood, a.k.a. Danny Garcia. No worker improvements, though, unfortunately. After the match, 43, solid D rating as Drew Gulak takes the mic. And um, he's laying his claim down. He... He's ready. He wants the Cruiserweight Championship, and he thinks he, you know, he's calling Cedric Alexander out. You got Jack Gallagher and Brian Kendrick, of course, still by his side as Drew Gulak. He wants his shot. He's also getting better at his gimmick, so good for the uh, the submission master or whatever they call him. 37 D minus rating here as we get a recap from last week's Lucha House Party and uh, Murphy slash Tony Nese brawl. As we, of course, you know, Tony Nese and Kalisto were facing each other. And Buddy Murphy kind of got in the face of Lucha House Party and led to a brawl between Buddy and Lince Dorado and Grand Metalik. And then, of course, you know, Kalisto and Nice trying to separate the two. And uh, we then go into a promo here, 37D-. minus. I'll be honest, I didn't really catch what Buddy Murphy said in this promo because um, while this promo was going on, my little brother was in the background and he was watching the new Godzilla trailer. So, I don't know, my attention was kind of, you know... It was a lot louder than my laptop was, and I don't—I really, wasn't really caring too much here, to be honest. So, I didn't really hear what Buddy Murphy was saying, but he was, you know, talking his crap, explaining why he doesn't really care for Lucha House Party and what happened last week. And uh, this leads to Tony Nice challenging Kalisto and one-on-one action. Me versus you. We're leaving our partners behind. You leave Kalisto, and uh, you leave Grand. Me- excuse me. You leave Lince Dorado and Grand Metalik behind. You can't necessarily leave Kalisto behind if you're in the match, and I'll leave Buddy behind. And we'll do it one on one. So next week we'll see that. 37 D minus for the uh, challenge rating. 37 D minus for Tozawa is getting ready for the ring. Apparently I took him off screen. That was uh, my bad. 30 E plus rating, as once again, kind of as we saw earlier in the night, Drake Maverick. Uh, this is happening during the match while it's going on, but again, not able to do that. So this is just the DM GM. Um, doing his thing here and uh, watching over the match, scouting out who's going to be next to face Cedric Alexander. Main event time, though, as Leo Rush, is he's ready for prime time? No, he isn't. <laughs> Whatever. 34 E-plus rating here in a terrible matchup. Leo Rush goes over Akira Tozawa in 10 minutes, 34 seconds with the rush hour. Uh, Leo Rush was really off his game. Come on, Rush. Main event and you're really off your game. This match did go ahead and cool the crowd. Leo Rush with an in-ring performance of a 24. Oh, God. Tozawa literally reversing Rush's number with a 42 in-ring performance. You can definitely tell who carried this match here tonight. It did go ahead and gain some heat for the feud somehow, though. But uh, Rush picks up the victory. Looking very impressive here tonight. So I'd I'd say that this rating is not uh, very reflective of what it actually was. Rush looked very impressive here tonight. Tozawa getting in his uh, fair share of moves. But man, have the mighty have fallen. Tozawa, 
you know, of course, being a former Cruiserweight champion, they bring it up. That's like kind of one of the main focal points of this feud is what has Tozawa done recently. And it really hasn't done nothing. And all he's really been doing is he's doing the job. He did the job for Adeo Itami, and now he's doing the job for Leo Rush. So interesting stuff here. Poor Tozawa. Poor, that's all I got to say. Poor guy. 37 D minus rating here as we end off the night with uh, Cedric Alexander confronting Drake Maverick, saying, you know, I heard that uh, at the end of the night, I'd figure out who's next to face me for the Cruiserweight Championship. And Maverick goes ahead and says that next week, it'll be Hideo Itami versus Drew Gulak versus TJP versus Mustafa Ali in a number one contenders match in a fatal four-way. <laughs> oh my God, I, don't, I tried to do a Rockstar Spud accent there. That was, that was pretty bad. In a fatal four-way. Uh, and the winner will face Cedric Alexander for the Cruiserweight Championship. So uh, TJP and the management storyline kind of advanced here alongside the Cruiserweight title feud, which is just Hideo Itami and Alexander. Uh, I'm not ending either of these until we see where it's going, but there you have that. We end off the show, and we get ourselves a 58C- rating. I really am starting to think that these John Cena commercial breaks really affect the show more than I think. Because... How? Just how? I don't get it. I do not get it. All right, though, that is going to be the end of this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, do me a favor. Leave me a comment, like, subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, don't forget to share this video with your friends, Facebooks, Twitters, Instagrams. I don't give a damn. Anything, anybody out there you feel would enjoy the video, definitely give it a share. Help your boy out here. Get some new subscribers. Up in there, bitch. Got some of my buddies down below in the description. You can always check them out. Zach Manzi, NBO, over on Twitch, doing his thing. Overwatch, wrestling games, Smite. Tons of other stuff that I'm probably not thinking of because it's Twitch and you can literally do anything. Streams daily, two hours plus every day. Check them out. Give them the uh, little bell icon or whatever is over there. Give them a watch if you're ever bored and uh, you want to go over on Twitch because I feel like that's the only ever reason people go on Twitch. Could be wrong, but that's my opinion. And then, of course, you got my boy Raging Yoshi over here on the YouTubes. Again, another place people, when they, they go on their board. That's where I go to practically live on YouTube. My boy Raging Yoshi, continuing on the Let's Play games, doing some Splatoon ranked Cave Story Let's Play, Kingdom Hearts 2.5 Let's Play, Kingdom Hearts 1.5 Beginner uh, Speed Runs. A lot of stuff going over on the Raging Yoshi YouTube channel. Give him a check out. I tried to stall for as long as I can because I want to uh, butter Randy Orton up because he's pissed that his heel turn went over horrible, but I don't know. It's taking its time. So, again, my name's been OMGWTF. I love WBRB, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.